All right, it's Gallic Dad, episode number 255. Was Churchill a great man? We're talking Winston Churchill, you know, the um, man who became famous in the Boer War. He went back to England, uh, uh, rose up in the parliament, became prime minister of England, but essentially was involved in World War I, World War II, and the fall of the entire uh, British Empire. Uh, was he a great man? Well, I don't know, but the entire world seems to think he was. Um, I'll give you uh, just two points to, to meditate upon, two points of perspective that um, perhaps makes, makes, could make you rethink. Maybe he wasn't necessarily a great man. Perhaps he was just a warmonger, and the uh, military-industrial complex wants you to honor a man who's a warmonger. It's funny because uh, Ronald Reagan, no, I'm sorry, George W. Bush, first and second, uh, they both had a bust of Winston Churchill in their Oval Office, and I think Donald Trump does too. I'm not certain he knows why he does, but perhaps he does. Uh, but Winston Churchill, you know, when um, uh, the Germans uh, rolled through uh, uh, Poland and they wanted, uh, they were trying to negotiate with the Polish to get a corridor uh, to go through Poland to go squash communism in its cradle and kill it. And they also wanted to annex Danzig, which uh, was, a, um, was a protectorate of Germany. Uh, it was, nine, it was uh, 95% German. It was taken from the Germans during the Treaty of Versailles, and they wanted that back, and they were negotiating with the Poles. Well, Churchill stepped up and told the Poles, so he said, listen up. If you fight the Germans and don't let them get into uh, Soviet Russia, and if you fight the Germans and don't give them Danzig back, uh, we got your back, and we'll take, uh, we'll take the Germans from the West. The problem is that uh, Br uh, Britain was completely impotent at that point in time. They were... Uh, uh, they were unable to uh, like launch war on uh, like Rhode Island or like uh, or or uh, um, Lithuania or like some tiny little country. They were they were not able to do anything uh, uh, preemptive at that point in time. They had no army left after World War One. Uh, they had like two battalions left, and they couldn't fight the Germans for sure not. And uh, they told uh, they gave the Poles a war guarantee and said, if you resist the Germans, well, we got your back. Well, the Germans, uh, well, so the Poles said, no, we're not going to give you a court order to go squash communism, and we're also not going to give you Danzig back. And then the Blitzkrieg occurred, and the, the, uh, uh, the Wehrmacht marched east, and essentially they said, listen, Poles, if you're going to help us, you're the enemy, and they squashed them. I mean, the, the Germans just destroyed the Polish people. Six million people got destroyed, and, and where, were they, where were the Brits at that point in time? Uh, they were impotent. They were in London doing nothing. They, di they didn't launch any war on the, uh, the Germans, and the Germans just squashed the Polish people. Yeah, thank you, thank you Winston Churchill. You led to s the death of six million Poles by a false war guarantee that you weren't able to deliver upon, even if, they, if, even, even if you wanted to. You know, and so and then let's go back to um, you know, the end of World War II. Uh, you know, the, the, the Russians and the Germans were fighting like crazy, and the, uh, the Russians were defecting from uh, Soviet communism, and they were, they were marching west, and they wanted to be taken as prisoners uh, by Germany and the Allies, and they were just trying to get out of the hell of World War II. Well, anyway, so they're marching west, World War II was over, and the Yalta Conference said, uh, we keep our uh, prisoners, you keep your prisoners. And so all these Germans who, uh, you know, fought for the, all the, I'm sorry, all these Russians who fought for uh, essentially the, the Allies, and they were trying to, like, do away with Soviet communism, march west to go be taken prisoners so they could have freedom. Um, well, what were they met with? They were met with battalions of Allied troops saying, go freaking home to Russia, knowing full well that they'll be put to death. And they're, and I'm not kidding, uh, literally Hundreds of thousands of Russians who wanted out of Russia for a better life after the war was over were turned away by Churchill and the Yalta Conference um, uh, to go be put to their deaths. And that's what happened. We knew they'd be put to their deaths. Churchill knew it. And uh, he said, no, we're going to follow the Yalta Conference and we're not going to take any refugees from Russia. Uh, goodbye. And so he turned them around and he forced them home. If they didn't turn around, he would have shot them. And so there you go. Thank you, Churchill. You know, everybody loves Churchill. Um, he's done a lot of crazy things in his life. Um, maybe he can come up with some better things that he's done. I know he's, uh, he, he led uh, Great Britain through its fall and its demise, the loss of the entire globe. I mean, Great Britain was essentially in charge of 25% of the globe. Um, and uh, the, the great wars that uh, Churchill thought were necessary for Great Britain, well, um, they, uh, they destroyed Great Britain. Great Britain's like a pimple on a map now. That's all it is. Thank you, Winston Churchill. Uh, so God bless you all. 
Like or subscribe and get the master prayer, the daily rosary. Take care.